Um, let's talk about fatal attraction. Ah. Uh, a, a lot of people... Oh, yeah, it was a great movie, great movie. A lot of people don't know that the ending that we all saw was not the original ending that was shot. Right. Tell me about that. The original ending, um... I committed suicide, like Madame Butterfly in the opera, which is I, I kind of, in a, in a sort of trance, just slowly cut my own throat. And you heard this extraordinary music. It was really wonderful. But it so happened that the only other fingerprints on the knife were Michael Douglas's. Mm. And so I took him down with me in my death. I thought that was kind of a nice ending. Yeah. <laughs> there are probably a couple people in the world who didn't see the movie, so we'll tell them the ending that we obviously ended with was uh, us thinking you were dead. Right. And you weren't dead. That was a bit of a cheat. <laughs> yeah, but we love that. <laughs> yeah, right. It's really interesting because whenever I've tried... I've been in movies, um, starting with my first movie, Garp, where a lot of vi some violence happens. And my dad, who is a doctor, always I always call him and say, Dad, is this real? What would really happen? Mm -hmm. And in Fatal Attraction, I did that when they came up with a new ending. And I found out that... And I found out firsthand that when you faint underwater, which is basically what she did, your body rises and you, you're, you break water, and then you come up, and you're totally disorientated. So I thought, oh, that would be great, because I really didn't want her to be a psychopath. Yeah. You know, uh, I, she was so... I wanted her to be self-destructive, and I thought if she comes out of the tub and just flails, that would be good. But Adrian wanted me under the water, so they literally had to hold me under the water mm -hmm. uh, so that I wouldn't float up. And that's the one thing where he, he kind of... <laughs> played tricks. But... Yeah. Um, but you liked the other ending better? I did. I did a lot of very, very careful research with a psychiatrist about that character. What I really wanted to know was, okay, this woman does this. Why? I, what in her past would create behavior like that? And in that process, it's so... Right. I mean, she's suicidal. She's self-destructive. And uh, that was the way it was originally written. And that, I thought... I also always thought of her as a very, very tragic character. Um, the, I think the, the thing that happened is that this, the, nobody knew how emotionally involved people were going to get. Right. And at the end of the movie, people were literally screaming for my blood. Right. And when I kind of got away, it was so disturbing um, that... You know, in the test that the, the, the studio put it through, nobody liked the ending. So I think the studio wanted to give people my blood, and they did, and it became this huge hit. Yeah. So uh, I, I think I've heard, I don't know if, I hope it's true that Paramount is making a movie about the making of Fatal Attraction, and I think they're going to put in the original ending, which would be really interesting. That would be great. Yeah. So we will get to see your favorite ending. Yeah. <laughs> I just, as far as being true to that character, but the ending that we ended up with, was a cathartic moment for the audience, which was also important. Yeah, and as we say in the neighborhood, the movie made crazy bank. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, uh... All the women brought their boyfriends and husbands several mm -hmm. times. <laughs> and the thing was, they didn't look at the movie, these women. They would just look at their husbands yeah. or their boyfriends. I went through that. I sat like this yeah. and I, hey, I'm going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how I watched yeah, the Yeah, they movie, wanted right? to see where they kind of flinched or kind of twitched. You know? Yes, yes. Wow, you mentioned Garp. Yeah. Um, you did something on the set of Garp that was very weird. Uh, first of all, what was, that, what was that movie like? Doing that movie, what was that like? That was my first movie, and it was incredible because I didn't know what I didn't know. I'd done a lot of theater in New York, um, and George Hill saw me in a play called Barnum, and he put me in Garp. Uh, I was much younger than the character that I was supposed to be playing. Um, I had Robin Williams. It was his first, I think, really serious movie, and Robin was extraordinary. I, have, I mean, I could talk about it forever, but the first day of shooting was a scene, and we shot it down in the East Village in New York, mm -hmm. and a huge crowd gathered because Robin was there, and he was yeah. really, really hot and popular. And it was a long tracking shot. Which you, you, we were coming out of a deli and walking all the way down the sidewalk, and my, I was so afraid 
because you have to hit these marks and say these lines at a certain at, at a certain time. Yeah. And uh, Robin took wonderful care of me. Um, but I was talking much too loud because I was used to doing stage, and I didn't yeah. know that I had this little mic on me. But it was not long after John Lennon's assassination. Mm -hmm. And at one point, somebody broke out of the crowd and came running across. And it was so frightening because everybody had that memory oh, yeah. very, very much in mind. Um, so Garp was my beginning. And uh, I think that's why I love that character so much and that, that whole experience. Yeah. Now, during this experience, did you streak? <laughs> Oh, that. <laughs> oh, that was, that was, it was a very hot day. <laughs> okay. And we were shooting the scene in um, Locker Room, and they had brought up about six young actors from New York who were going to strip naked, and I felt so sorry for them. Um, you know, just to be brought up in order to be naked. I, and, and then... Uh, the, the, it was so hot that the crew was kind of on edge. And I thought, I should go naked, you know? I mean, I should, you know, I should make them feel a little bit better. So uh, I started taking off my clothes, and I only got to my bra and my girdle and my stockings and my shoes and my nurse's hat. And I walked into the scene as though I had all my clothes on and I did all my lines, and there was this stunned silence. And then everybody just <laughs> fell on the floor, and it really kind of meant, you know... They weren't, they weren't so testy after that. Yeah. <laughs> kind of lightened the mood. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I wish uh, I'd had the courage to take it all off. But... I bet they wish you had had the courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry about your Mets, by the way. Oh, yeah. Better luck next year. Yeah, well, I hope they can rebuild well. Yeah. And the one thing I wanted to make sure I got to ask you is, Will there, will there be a Jagged Edge 2? I hope so. We are developing it now at Columbia. Good. And uh, we're waiting for the first draft of the script. Okay. Because I love that relationship between... It would be, I mean, I'm so sorry that Jeff Bridges was shot. Because mm. he's so great. But, um... So I think we'll... we'll uh, <laughs> um, it, the, the, the relationship between my character is quite... Um, sophisticated and Robert Loggia, who's so wonderful mm -hmm. as the hard-bitten detective, I think was uh, a great relationship, and I hope to build on that. Yeah. Well, good luck with the movie that's uh, about to hit now, and uh, we'll look for Jagged Edge, and I'll look for you to come back and see me again soon. I'd love to. Continued success. Thank you. Lynn Clark. <laughs>